Good evening. Welcome back to the third segment of the Glazoff Gang. This is a very heated segment. Rob Nelson is the author of 10 Common Sense Solutions to America's Biggest Problems. Rob Nelson is the author of this book. He's also a former Fox News talk show host. We also have with us America's leading comedian, conservative comedian. And what about an influential Jew? You used to influence Evan Evan Say It is also, he has also been ranked as being among the top 25 influential conservative Jews in America. It remains mysterious what he's influencing. (laughs) We might get to that. And Leon Weinstein, the expert on capitalism. His critically acclaimed book has just come out, Capitalism 101. Gentlemen, this guy is num- number 25 influential Jew only because there's only 25 Jews that are conservative. Actually, the truth is there were only 24. I had a claim to be a Jew just because they needed me. <laughs> <laughs> just to make it a round number-ish. Evan, Evan, we have to get back for one second before we get to you, Rob. We had some uh, readers and viewers write in last week. You made a comment about Jewish mothers on the last show. Uh-huh. Could you explain what you meant and qualify it briefly? Um, I, I believe somebody on the panel said something about Jewish mothers being overbearing. Is that and, true? And, uh, no, they're not Is overbearing, it true, but they are. Yes. He says it's true. <laughs> True. Do you have any experience I, with yes, it? Yes, it can be very true. Okay, but is it anti-Semitic to say this? No. Okay, so Evan, so what happened? Who's over or I, what I you said, said they're what overly I said, concerned? I said they're 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 overly concerned. I mean, overbearing. No, they're worried. Okay, now is it true that the Jewish mothers in a Jewish family usually run the household? Is that? What it, how it goes? What is the? Um, I don't know. Straight? I mean, I, I believe, but I have no reason to believe this. But, uh, so but, anec- but anecdotal, so that overall, Jewish mothers, at least in my generation, tended to stay home and be housewives and and homemakers, and okay. they raised the children. And when and, when you came home from school, there was mom, not dad. Okay. So yeah, mom was that influence. And so your main point was that your mom was. I had worried. no point. Oh, you I had, had no point. point. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Rob Nelson. Got a lot of time on. Rob that. Nelson. I think he's afraid of my book. <laughs> now, Rob. We called it the wrong name. Do we have wait, time? wait, wait, wait. What it's is called oh. last call? Oh, last That's the call. Part. The ten common sense solutions is yeah. important, but it's last call. It was Absolutely. a wake up. It's almost call. like oh, it's yeah. a subtitle, and he left out the title. Exactly right. because the yeah. subtitle <laughs> is very important. <laughs> it is last call, Rob. It's still very, very relevant to today. Yeah. In terms of the last well, segment, bring up two, three big problems right now, or one. Yeah, or yeah, two, no, or I'll toss a couple out. I mean, I think, I think, and and I wrote this book in the, in the spirit of let's avoid what has happened in the last few years, which is, you know, a, a basic destruction of of in on many levels of America for the next generation. A, a big part of what launched this was my concern over the massive fiscal crisis we we're heading into and rising debt, and the idea that you're passing debt and trillions of dollars of debt on the future of future generations. Becomes unsustainable. And therefore, you're very economy. criticism of socialism. You're very yeah, critical I'm not of socialism. Going to, I'm, going to, I'm not taking a side here. I'm talking about a problem. America, both sides, both parties, Bill Clinton did a good job getting us out, but both sides are responsible for a massive, growing debt problem. Yeah, but, but underneath the debt that, problem but underneath is because that, but of the, the socialist But philosophy. underneath that, the bigger problem that I point out in this book is a, a fundamental systemic problem. I think our political system, our two-party partisan gridlock system where both sides divvy up the pie and basically just disagree with the other side is, is, is a dangerous mess. And I think that actually I call for two radical things in this book. One is a I call it a national enema where you have an election where you throw everybody out of office and elect all new people who are not politicians. Is this realistic? Was our revolution realistic? Thomas, and here's the second one. So you believe the second one. everybody out? Start clean. Brand new clean slate. Can't do worse. Can't do worse than what we have. Couldn't. We don't need, and I've been worked in Washington, I really believe that. That's one radical idea. It's a systemic idea. The other is okay. a constitutional convention. And people go, oh my God, but the constitution, and you even said it earlier in the first segment about how the constitution works, and that's what, and it does, but the constitution's full of holes. And by the way, Thomas Jefferson recommended that every generation you should have a constitutional Actually, convention. Actually, what he said was we should kill Evan, them, what do you think of Rob's well, brilliant so ideas? Uh, Rob, These are very simple common sense. And solutions okay, well, to America. And those are just problems. two. There's a lot of practical ones. Yeah, and his book is called just, Last just, Call. So you know, just so you know, there's some very practical ones, like privatizing Social Security, which, you know, of course, is a very conservative mm-hmm. idea. Flat okay. tax. Okay, okay let me, you know. if, Evan, if what do you think hear, of these great ideas? hear me out, uh, there are things that we actually agree on there, but, but we, need to, we need to define our terms. Over and over and over again, I have spoken about conservatives and liberals and conservatism and liberalism. I've not mentioned Democrat and Republican more than once or twice. Um, yeah, it has been Democrats and Republicans who have grown this uh, deficit 
this this uh, untenable and immoral deficit. But it's it's when the Republicans were acting in a liberal fashion, a socialist fashion. A, yeah, both parties have done it. We have a means of getting rid of all of them. It's called the Tea Party, which effectively got rid of a, a good many people because they weren't just partisans. They didn't just go, yeah, you've got an R next to your name. They said, yeah, you've got an R next to your name, but you're not acting in a conservative fashion. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. And, and point okay. two, you said we, you want to bring in all new people who aren't professional politicians. I don't, you know, actually, some could be. But I mean, I just brand new. Okay. Can't be but, an but, off, can't but, have but held again, office in Congress. Here again, you have a better chance with the Republican Party because one of the things that differentiates the Democrats and the Republicans in, in government is Democrats, almost without exception, have never had a job. They have always okay. come from right. some Such field. Such an overgeneralization. Where, okay, one I, second. I, I, I made clear okay, that it's thank a generalization. You. Thank you. We got to move on. Okay, Leon, what do you make of this discussion? And the problem so is that the system doesn't work, and I agree with you 100% on that. I'm not sure I didn't read your book. I'm sorry. Hopefully I will read it. What I see is that there is several loopholes that effectively used by both parties, by both parties, Democrats a little bit more than Republicans, they try to take a little bit more than Republicans uh, from the productive citizens, but the situation is that because of the 16th Amendment, because of the um, um, the government, the, 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 the uh, Congress can take money from productive citizens at any moment that they want, in any amount they want, it's totally wrong. There are a number of other, um, other wrong approaches, and I do believe that not People needed to be changed and re-elected, but the system needed to be changed. And the government should, by constitution, stop interfering in our lives. Okay. Well, and look, right. and, and I'm, I, I mean, I agree fundamentally with that idea. I think we have, we have a political, broken political system with a bunch of, people like to use the word fat cats, but whether they're new or not, these people get into office. Congress takes care of itself, by the way. You know, doesn't want health care for everybody else, but gives themselves the fattest health care plan there is at our expense. What do you think they take of care Obama, of themselves. Obama doubling they take the debt? Uh, they during t- I'm not an Obama numbers. fan. No, but, but I'm not. I'm not it, has it been a disaster in terms of what I'm Obama not defend, has done? I don't, I, th- I don't think Obama... D- Came, did anything that he said he was really going to do. I thought he was a political a politician from the start and kind of playing that, a certain role. Okay. But that said, George Bush is one of the worst presidents we've ever had, in my view. No. You know, in, in what and, context? And, in, in every like, I, okay. he got us b- buried deep in a war we didn't need to be in. He okay, got he racked up argument, our deficits but in terms of and debt. Economically, debt. He racked up the debt. But wait but a again, minute. But, but again, Obama here's my point. Here's my the point. Debt. Both sides. What both parties are sitting in. All, look, here's a great little mini example. When I when I was when I worked for Clinton, I was in a meeting with with David Gergen, and we were talking about privatizing Social Security. And David Gergen said the president agrees with a lot of what you're trying to do. They ran that up a flagpole and found out what would happen if they yeah. said anything about privatizing public Social okay, Security. Yeah. C- got shot down. When the when the Republicans suggest privatizing Social Security, they get shot down. Okay. Whatever one side said, the other blows okay. their smithereens. Evan, um, one of the the opposite of, you know, you, you say that I generalize, and, and the opposite of generalizing is saying that nothing is true because it's not 100%. I want to go back to the point I was making about if there were a law that said you could only work in the White House uh, at, at, at a senior level uh, if you've spent five minutes in a job that was anything other than just talk. Barack Obama would have to fire 93% of his advisors. That's not a made-up number. That's a real number. They've come from academia. They've come from journalism. They've come from here. They've come from there. Um, you look at the... You look at Joe right. Biden, never had a job. You look at Nancy Pelosi, never had a job. You look at Barney Frank, never had a job. Go the other way. You look at Sarah Palin, she had a job. Okay. You look well, at Michelle okay. Bachman, she had a point. job. Evan, okay, one second. Yeah, well, Leon, the expert want... on capitalism? Uh, I think that we have to fire uh, Obama as, as soon as possible, if possible, faster, impossible. So in one year, we have to do it because otherwise this country will become socialistic country. And we cannot. But we're not going to become a. So- that's see, that's not. just extreme. We're not, we're not already, becoming a. So- we're not going to become a socialist country. Well, of course we, we will. We're we're already, wait, wait, we're wait, already, wait, 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 wait! You don't think that Obama is taking the United States on a socialist path? No. Of I think he's. Too, I think he's making some really bad decisions. Is already only. No. Here's the bottom line. No what, let me give you the bottom line. Here's 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 the bottom line. Because this is for a, uh, too long a conversation. Bottom line is America's in serious trouble. In my view, both parties are responsible, and people are pissed off. The Tea Party was the beginning. The Occupy movement, well, all anarchistic oh, and lost. Nonetheless, nonetheless, is another version. There's a middle class version coming of people in the middle who are fed up and. 
wait a minute. We can rebuild this. The occupiers are mostly degenerates. Yeah. They're masturbating uh, publicly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. Public public no, what I'm saying is it's reflecting the same anim the same frustration at the system that brought out the Tea Party, and more of that's going to come. I'm not saying they're the same. I'm saying it's coming in terms of the occupiers. What do you want to say in counter to that? I went down there several times to Los Angeles, occupy Los Angeles. I interviewed them. I filmed them. Uh, I met with about 40 of them, and I met only two these types are of people. These are degenerate one, Marxists. One, I met several of the, of the organizers, very well dressed, not sleeping over there, coming there and giving something to other people. Yeah. And the second, it's a mix. second, okay. se- second type. I don't know, but we're trying to mix it. Yeah. Well, well, I just but my say, point is a larger Obama, movement. When, o- gonna listen, happen. when Obama says that he wants to transform the United States of America, that's a socialist talking that wants to destroy the United States of America. We have one minute left. Each of you, please, the gang members of the Glazov gang, 20 seconds each. What are, what are your short term plans, yourself personally, in the near future? Tell our viewers what you're up to. Leon? I'm, I'm uh, trying to advertise my book. Uh, I'm going around talking about that because I think that education is important enormously because if we will not educate ourselves, our kids, our friends, etc., we will become a socialistic country. We will vote ourselves into socialism. Thank you. Evan? I'm speaking at events, and if there are folks out there who want me to speak at their event, they can contact me or you. I'm working on an ebook. I, it's a little premature to mention specifically what, and then I, I'm sick and tired of sitting here while he has a book and he has a book, and I don't just mean YouTube, but every week everybody has a book but me, so I'm writing a book. Rob? I actually want to write another book. Class no, call was good. No, two and all. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I apologize. Call. I only last said call. his subtitle last time. Last Get call. Rob Watch Nelson's book, Last Call, 10 Common Sense Solutions to America's Biggest Problems, still very relevant today. Gentlemen, thank you for joining the Glassoff gang. It was a pr- pleasure, and it was a bit rowdy, but maybe that's good, and we'll have you back. Join us again for another edition of Thanks, the Glassoff gang. Thank you.